Welcome everybody to yet another Flourish webinar. Today we're going to be learning how to visualize Google Trends data. So we're going to be joined today by Leslie, who's a senior data analyst at Google Trends, Luisa, product manager at Flourish, and myself and Mafe, content specialist at Flourish. And I'm going to be monitoring the chat today. Um, Leslie, can I get the next slide, please? Thank you. Any questions that you have, please ask them um, through the chat. I'm going to be there along with my colleagues and we'll aim to get back to you as soon as possible. Any information of upcoming webinars and previous sessions you can find on our webinar page. Do sign up to get email notifications on both our mailing list for the webinar and our newsletter. And we would love to hear back from you. So fill our survey to share your feedback with us. And I'm going to be sharing links to those in the chat as well. And with that, I'm giving over to Leslie. All right, thank you so much for being here. Uh, this is what we're gonna do today. Um, I'm part of the Trends Data team and Google Trends is what I do every day. So today I'm gonna um, tell you all about Google Trends, how to understand the data and to share with you the basics. And then Luisa is gonna do some visualizations with you. Basically, this is what you can expect. Or this is what we're gonna do later on. Uh, but first, uh, it's gonna be a bit theoretical. Uh, and then we're gonna put that into practice. So maybe the most important question for those of you who have no idea what Google Trends is, uh, Google Trends data is an unbiased sample of our Google search data. Um, we have a real-time data set and an archival long-term data set. And the real-time one is one of the largest in the world. I'm part, as I said, I'm part of the Trends data team. And we curate, analyze, and visualize search data all day long. We mainly support journalists in newsrooms and um, held them help them tell stories with data. So very important, trends data is anonymous. Uh, therefore, like, I can't share demographic data with you. I don't know, you know um, anything about the people that are searching, their age or um, uh, sex or race or all, all these things. Um, it's all anonymous. Um, we only know what is being searched, where it's being searched and when. Then our data is normalized. That means each data point is divided by the total of the searches within that geography and within that time range. And so that means the data is relative. Uh, this actually uh, means that it's a lot easier to compare different countries with different populations or even different time frames with uh, one another. And even if we think back in 2004, that's where trends data starts, there weren't as many people searching as there are now. So it makes sense to normalize the data. Then we work with a sample because there's so many searches every day, our, our computers wouldn't be able to process that amount of data. So we work with the sample and because it's relative, we we use an index that is between zero and 100. And 100 always represents the largest uh, data point within that data set. So who might use this data? I was mentioning journalists in newsrooms before, and that's true. Um, our team supports uh, journalists, but this data can be used by researchers, by marketers, basically by everyone. Um, and there's a lot of insights you can get out of, of the data. And I'll explain more now. So Google Trends, we can break it down into three things, uh, topics, timeframes, and locations. We do have global data, we have country level data, regional data, and even city level data, but that's limited. And I'll um, talk more about this later on. By the way, we're gonna go through these slides now, just because it's easier. And then I'm gonna give you a quick uh, demo of the Google Trends tool and just really quickly walk you through it again. 
So we differentiate between topics and search terms. Um, we have something called the Google, Google Knowledge Graph. If you, for example, search for a celebrity, you often see a little box on the side that gives you more information about this celebrity. That's the Google Knowledge Graph. And we use this also for Google Trends. Uh, the Google Knowledge Graph sorts search terms according to topics, and it builds these clusters uh, of words uh, that relate to the topic. So you type in a search term and you get a, um, a drop down menu and you can choose different topics. And a topic accounts for different languages, which is especially important if you're looking at a country that has several official languages, then it accounts for synonyms and misspellings and just related searches. Whereas if you would use a search term, that would be the exact term and would only return that data. We do have different time frame options. As I said before, we have real-time data, um, which is the past seven days. And then we have the long-term data that goes back to 2004. I'm going to show you this in a bit um, In when we look at the tool itself. We have the uh, option to look at different locations, worldwide, worldwide data but also uh, country specific data by just typing in the name of the country or the region and even uh, some city data. So what can trends data look like? Uh, the ones of you who already know uh, Google Trends tool, tool are probably familiar with this here. These are the related queries. We differentiate between top searches and rising or trending searches. The difference is when we look at top searches, they are, they are literally the most searched searches. So we're looking at volume uh, or, you know, the ones that, mo that performed highest or have the highest search volume. And the rising and trending queries are the ones that have risen the most in search interest. For example, we'd look at the past seven days and compare them with the previous seven days. And we'd, we'd, these would be the ones that have had the highest growth, which is often also more interesting because when we look at the top searches overall, they basically are always the same and they're not always as interesting. Uh, with the Google Trends tool, we can compare up to five topics. In this example here that you can see, I just had a look at different movies that star Julia Roberts. And we know now also from the bars over here, this is the overall volume, that Notting Hill is the movie that has the highest search volume in the UK since 2004. If you would want to compare more than five topics, you, you wouldn't be able to do it with the front end tool, but you could actually uh, send an email to us and we could help you with that. Then spiking searches. This is something we usually look out for. We want to see steady um, search interest and then a huge spike. And then we know, oh, something must have happened. And that's that's what we look out for. In this example here, it's showing you search interest for how to move to Canada from the US, which spiked after um, Roe v. Wade got overturned in the US last June. Um, so you see search interest is pretty low and then it goes up quite significantly. That is interesting to us. Um, also the same thing happened um, 2016 searches for how to move to Canada from the US spiked like crazy and were, were never searched this much. It had to do with a certain person being elected president of the United States. Then ranked searches over time is another possibility. So you want to look at different topics and you want to see how they're being searched over time. This is especially interesting when there's a rivalry for example if you want to look at how political parties are being searched or 
Um, in this case, in this example, uh, characters from the TV show Succession, and you can uh, um, do a horse race chart with it, which can be a really interesting insight into how these topics have developed in search. So before I showed you how to compare topics, but we can also compare different um, time frames with each other. This is an example of the the women's euro. So we have last year and then the previous euros. And we, we can see again that last year's euro was searched the most. Then we can also, of course, check which countries in the world have the highest search interest for a specific topic. In this case, inflation, um, past 12 months worldwide, we know that Turkey is searching the most for inflation. And very interesting um, is to compare different topics within a geography, um, especially when there's a rivalry again. So, for example, it's it, it's always fascinating to see a clear divide within a geography, like who would have known that Drake is a lot more popular in the South than in the rest of the US. And so we compared topics, we compare, compared timeframes, but of course you can also compare locations. So here we're seeing search interest for the topic cost of living within the UK. And I broke it down into regions and we can see that Wales, which is the yellow um, bar and the yellow line is actually searching the most for the topic cost of living. So actually let's take a quick look at the tool. Uh, this is our main page. We can then go on explore. And so we can type in a, a topic. For example, Academy Awards, we'll um, look at that again afterwards with Louisa. Um, as you see, here's the drop down menu. This would be the search term. These are all topics, search topics, which I would recommend using. We have the option to choose different countries or even regions by just typing them in here. Here you can see different time frames that are available. All of this here, past hour, past day, past seven days, is real time and it's quite granular. So you could even go down to the minute. And all of this here, past 30 days, um, this is all um, our long term data. And of course, you can also set a custom time range either in here in the archive data, um, pick a year, or you can even um get a custom range here for the real-time data and even choose it by hour i'm can i jump in real quick i have a question that maybe we can tackle yes, um please. while you're showing um said is asking if he's interested in showing energy in china should he type energy or its translation in chinese oh i think he can try both um I guess we do actually have a topic for energy, so you could use that, but it's always worth um, just playing around with it and have a look at the um, related queries um, and see what comes up. Because sometimes um, there might be a very specific word translated in that language that might just work better. So it's a matter of playing around with it, but we do have a topic and it. if you have a topic, then that means that it's actually language. It's language agnostic. agnostic, yes. And also there's an option, which I didn't show before. We do have categories and there's an option for energy. Should be at least. Um, energy and utilities, actually. So, which is not what I typed. There we go. And... You could actually have a look at the top related queries for energy by just using the category um, 
By the way, this is only working for long-term data, not real-time. For real-time data, you always have to add a topic or a search term here. Um, but yeah, let's just change that again. And then here you have a geographic breakdown. So I have the top region searching for a topic and you can change it to cities. So you see the top city searching for a specific topic. And here again, the related queries that I talked about before and the related topics, and you should you can change it to top related queries. All right. And yes, that would be it. So I'm going to give over to you, Luis, and we'll make some visualizations. Sounds great. Thank you so much. OK, let's create some visualizations. Thank you so much, Leslie, for that in-depth overview. I learned a lot. And I love all the different ways that you can use the tool to find answers to questions. It's super interesting. And I really wasn't aware of so many of them. Um, OK, before we start with creating our very own visualizations using Flourish, I just wanted to mention that you're welcome to follow along visualizing with us, um, but that, of course, depending where in the world you're based, uh, the default filters might look a bit different. And also, we already pulled the data yesterday um, morning that we'll be visualizing just so that we don't um, get stuck or lose too much time during the session. So again, you can grab all the data um, relevant for your location or for the world from trends.google.com. And also, I won't be going into everything in depth um, just because this is a, sh a shorter session with um, lots to get through, but we do have a blog post that Mafe will be sharing in the chat. Um, about how to visualize Google Trends data with step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that with Flourish. So let's get started with our first example. Um, we are going to create a word cloud and not just any word cloud, but a topical word cloud about the Academy Awards that just took place a few days ago. Um, and this is the one that we're going to be recreating or something very similar to it at least. Uh, um, this word cloud is visualizing the related search terms um, that came up to the search topic of the Academy Awards, and they are sized by their search volume. Um, and word clouds are great for a fun, engaging, and easy to understand visualization, as we can see here. You can also make them look really pretty by adding your own fonts if you're on a business or enterprise account or by changing the colors. Um, however, they're not the best choice if you want to very accurately convey the values of each search term. Um, in this case, the pop-ups do help though, because uh, as we hover, we can get a little bit more granular information. So we're just gonna walk through how to create this one ourselves now. So I'm just gonna jump over into the Google Trends tool. And I'm going to start by searching for the Academy Awards topic. And here, the topic would be the one that says award. Is that correct, Leslie? Exactly. And the other one says search term. Um, and again, and you actually have a ver like you have the other topics as well. But I think it's best in this case to just go with Academy Awards overall. And um, okay, some people. And so if I would use this and... one, it would it would kind of take only yeah. Academy Awards and not Oscars and in different languages and alternative spellings and all that. Exactly. It's just the, the topic in this case will work better because it, it's already a cluster of different words and, you know, nominees, et cetera. Um, so we'll, it, it will encompass more. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, so I'm just going to adjust this instead of the past 12 months. I'm interested in maybe the past seven days. Um, just because the Oscars recently took place um, and I don't need the full year's data. And now um, to create my word cloud, I'm interested in these related queries here. Um, now I can choose between these rising and the top queries. Um, 
when it comes to rising, we have a, quite a few breakout searches. What, what does that mean exactly, Leslie? Exactly, that's a good point. Um, so breakout actually means that there's been an percentage increase of more than 5,000%. Uh, often, you know, this is when a search query is relatively new or there's been very, very little search interest before. So it just spikes really high. Um, and then we refer to it as a breakout search, if that makes sense. And of course, because the Oscars were yesterday and there was just the search interest was so, so high, we do actually see a lot of breakout searches. Okay, cool. So a breakout search is anything above kind of 5,000% increase since the last time frame. Yes. Okay, cool. So in this case, I'm just going to start by hitting this download button and that's going to download a CSV, which I can open up in Excel um, after accepting some change. Um, and it looks like it's combined both the top yes. search terms and the rising ones. And I guess because those over 5,000 are not showed with numbers, that's why it says breakout. Is that correct? Exactly. exactly. Okay. So in the case of my word cloud, I might be better off using this data because I actually want to size my search terms by a certain value, which I couldn't do here. Yeah, I think specifically in this case, it makes sense to use the, the top queries. And this is the index, index I was referring to before in the theory part. Um, so 100 is always the, the largest value within the data set and then everything is relative to the largest value um so that would be the index and these are the index values okay awesome um just to speed things along we've already copied this data into a sheet which is over here we will also be sharing this with you at the end of the session on our webinar page <clears throat> and in the email that we send around after the webinar um, but just so that we don't lose too much time kind of cleaning up the data, we have this sheet already pre prepared. So I'm just going to check this one out. This is exactly what we saw before using the top search queries, top search terms rather than the rising or breakout. And what we can do now is simply copy this data and head over to Flourish to create our word cloud. Um, so I'm just in my Flourish editor here, and you can just click new visualization, which will bring you to our template chooser where you'll find lots of different templates to choose from. And I'm just gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom to find my word cloud. And you can now click on simple word cloud to get started. And now there are two different options here. We can either paste in raw text which is the default in this word cloud. So in this example, we have a piece by William Shakespeare where we've just pasted in all that text and it's actually counting how many words get mentioned how many times. In the case of our data though, because we have a data sheet structure where we are ranking a search term with a certain value, we actually want to use this data sheet option, which will get rid of that text, that free text area and we will go to our data tab instead. Now I'm just gonna clear this using this little drop down arrow on the data tab icon. And I'm going to paste in my data, just doing command V. You can also upload your data using this button here or even link it with Google Sheets if you're on one of our premium or newsrooms plans. And now all I have to do is update my column bindings here. So I just have to say which one is the word, which is A, that's correct. And then what do I want to size it by, which is B, the value. And now I can, I'm gonna get rid of my color because I don't actually need to shade by anything in this case. You might have an additional color column um, that you want to include though. And there we go. Here's our first iteration of a word cloud. Um, there's a few things that I usually like to do when I'm working on word clouds, um, which is kind of reduce the number of different angles that are visible because it has a bit of an odd shape in its current form. So I'm just gonna head over to cloud style and over here in this number of angles settings, I'm just gonna reduce that to two. 
And now that will ensure that we only have two angles. Um, now I have the issue that I kind of would prefer my words to be a little bit more legible, at least some of them. So I'm actually gonna change my minimum angle here to zero, which will kind of flip them. You can also play around with this one. Maybe you wanna make it 180, which will flip the, them the, wrong, the other way around or also zero so that they're all showing the same way. Um, but I'm actually gonna keep that one at 90. Um, this is already what you could do very quickly, very easily using the raw output from Google Trends. Um, what we did in our example is we went a step further and actually split our data um, by word so that each word was kind of um, its own uh, its own word. Um, so if we have everything everywhere all at once, uh, we could split it so that everything is a word, everywhere is a word. Um, it just depends on kind of what your aim of your visualization is. Because in this case, actually, I want to keep the full um, term visible so that I can read names and things like that. Um, I'm actually going to keep it like this. However, there are a couple of duplicates in here, uh, like alternative spellings. So I'm actually going to exclude one or two of them just to get rid of that Oscars being almost the only thing that we can read. So I'm just going to go into my exclude word setting and at the bottom add Oscar, Oscars 2023. Um, I could kind of remove all of those because I, I already know that I'm visualizing the Oscars. I kind of want to show the related searches. Um, I can just go add all of those. There's quite a few alternative spellings here. So yeah, let's just work with this. Um, another thing you might want to do is adjust the minimum and maximum size because some of these are super tiny and I can hardly read them. I'm just going to change that to like 10 and then maybe 50. Um, they're small again now, so maybe more like 20 and 50, something like that. Um, totally up to you. You can also change the way that they are scaled. I'm just going to do something like that. Um, you can even change kind of the layout number if you don't like the way that they are being laid out here. That, that was too small again. There we go. That's quite cool. I like that. I'm going to leave it as it is. And I'm just going to make some final tweaks now to change the styling of my word cloud. To change the kind of fonts and colors, you can go to the layout settings and you can choose from a few different fonts here. If you're on a business or enterprise plan, you might have a theme set up with additional fonts, which you could choose here. So that could be a really nice and easy way to create an on-brand word cloud. And I'm just going to change my background color to give it a bit of a, an award night feel, as well as my text color in the cloud style settings with maybe something golden. There we go. And there's my word cloud. Um, again, because the terms are a little bit long, it might not be as um, beautiful as the one that we did here, where we actually split the words. Um, so it's kind of depends on what, what you're going for. Um, we also recently added pop-ups to this template. So like in other templates uh, that we offer at Flourish, you can now bind additional information in your info for pop-up settings and then customize the way those look further in the pop-up and panel settings. And then finally, you might want to publish and embed or download it as an image or add it to a Canva presentation. Um, and you can do all that via the export and publish button, which will generate an embed code. Okay, that's my word cloud done. Um, Mafe, hi. Hello. Yes, sorry, popping in very quickly. That was amazing, by the way, because we do have a couple of questions and I just didn't want them to accumulate by the end. Yeah, um, sure. That's great. Thanks, sorry, man. I wasn't monitoring the chat. Let's... No worries at all. Um, yeah, so these two are addressed to Leslie. So the first one comes from Stella. And Stella was asking, what is the time frame against which the rising searches are compared? Mm -hmm. So if we're looking at the past seven days, it would compare that time frame with the previous seven days. If we would compare the past hour, it would compare it with the previous hour. If we would compare 2022, it would compare it with 2021. So um, just with the t previous uh, uh, time frame, 
and it would be the exact same time period, if that makes sense. Right. So here, if we look at past 12 months, then it's yeah. showing us. It will, the tool will actually compare these past 12 months with the previous 12 months and then to really assess, okay, which terms have risen in search interest. Amazing. Thank you so much. And then Stephanie asked, um, what if your country is not available on Google Trends? Is it possible to request for a country to be included? Um, you can try. Uh, it's it's not up to me, but we're sharing uh, email addresses in the end. And I would say it would be worth to send an email to us and then I can forward that to our engineers because that would be a question for the engineering team. Okay, amazing. I will definitely pop that in the chat. And KJ had just asked, will breakout data ever make it into rising or top? So breakout data, breakout searches are rising queries. It just means they they have increased more than 5,000%. So we don't give them a percentage, percentage value, which is called them breakout searches, especially when before there was no search interest. Like when we think about Wordle, there was no search interest for, for Wordle before last year. So it, of course it is a breakout search. Um, but it, it can be that of course, you know, a search is a, 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 a rising search and then, but it's also a, one of the top searches. It, it really depends, but I would treat them as two different things. Okay, amazing. There are a couple of more questions in the chat, but I'm aware of time. So I'll just make a note of them and we'll cover if we have time um, further in the session. So back to you, Luisa. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Mafe. Awesome. Um, just because of time, I will leave this recap here for if anyone wants to come back to the word cloud and recreate it. These are all the steps to go through uh, along with the splitting of words if you're interested in doing that. Um, the next one we're going to create is the very engaging line chart race. Um, here's an example of the best actress nominees competing in search data. It's really engaging and I just want to know what's going to happen next and who's going to win. And um, that's exactly what our line chart race is for. Um, you can visualize your time series data as either an animated line chart, which is what we have here or as ranks um, in an animated bump chart. So maybe if we have very different values um, that are hard to compare, because maybe the three first ones are all super tiny in search volume and the two top ones are really high, then we might want to use ranks rather than scores. And also you probably don't want to use this template with more than um, 10 different um, comp people competing or categories competing just because it, it would get a bit messy and busy. Um, so let me just try and change the slide. Oh, I'm going to check switch back to the um, Google Trends tool and to create kind of the output that I need to create a line chart race, I now need to compare different actresses. Um, would you be able to tell me which ones those are, Leslie? Yeah, of course. So Michelle Yo. Michelle Yo. And then um, did I spell it correctly? No, it's with an E O. E O. No, <laughs> with a Y. Y E O. Yes, there she is. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, and again, we have the search term versus the mm -hmm. actual topics. I'm going to go with the topic. Um, I'll just go back here to get the next name before I make yes. a fool of myself. <laughs> Ana de Armas. Oh, yes. Again, I love how it gives us the nationality of the actresses along with their names. Um, Kate Blanchett. And Michelle Williams. By the way, just as a, a note, um, all these these search topics, um, they it's all done with the help of natural language processing, and it's it's always evolving. So there's always new search topics, and they're changing again. So yeah, 
So if you see changes, it's because it's done with NLP and um, it's constantly doing like reshuffling basically. Okay, awesome. Thanks for that context. This is super interesting already just to see kind of which one of these actresses has had the most search interest over time. Like I really would not have expected Ana de Armas to be so much above the others, but um, we're currently looking at the past 12 months. Do you think we should change the time frame a bit? Um, yeah, maybe if, if this is about the Oscars, we could do um, past seven days, past, yeah, past seven days, past 30 days. Makes sense. Oh, wow. And now that this gives us a totally different picture, of course, because Michelle Ye Yo is the one that actually went on to win mm -hmm. the award. So that puts that into context. So that's really interesting. Um Okay, I think that's all I need to do. Is that right? Or do I need to change anything else? Um, I think that works for us. And then you can obviously download the data exactly over there. And then this one will look like this. Yes, this um, is the raw output. Okay, cool. Again, um, in interest of time, we've already moved our raw output over here into a Google Sheet. Um, there were a few things that we had to do to tweak uh, in order to bring this into Flourish. Um, the first one was we tidied up our time format just using the format settings in Google Sheets. And then we also replaced these less than ones with 0 0.5, um, just because I believe that's what you do internally as well, because... Yeah, I mean, we do have our backend tools, so... We, I usually don't run into this problem, but if you download the data here and you get, you know, uh, it tells you this was smaller than one, just, we just changed it to 0 0.5. So we're able to, you know, okay. use it and flourish. So you would just do that with a simple find yes. and replace. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Then here's the kind of final output, um, tidied up. I think this is, ignore the time frame that's slightly different to the one that we just pulled. Uh, this is just to show you what, what it looked like after we cleaned it. Um, I'm just, again, going to copy this and head back to Flourish. Just gonna hit my home button and click new visualization. And this time I'm going to go to the line chart race, which I can find down here. I'm just going to select the simple line chart race and head to the data tab again clear my data and paste in my new data this template has um, our new data typing feature which tries to analyze the columns and interpret what they are and make the appropriate bindings over here in this case we can already kind of see a preview that looks a bit weird and not quite what we're after um, i can tell you why that is very easily, which is that in the line chart race, we actually want our dates to be in the column headers. So we can easily fix that by just swapping our rows and columns like this. And now I'm just gonna bind my column A again. And now we can see the preview looks a bit more sane. I'm just gonna switch back to the preview here. And as we can see, that is now racing away. Um, we also have some images uh, that we've prepped. You can simply upload an image to Flourish by heading over to the data tab. Um, and I'm just gonna add a new column by right-clicking and inserting a column. Right-clicking and then saying upload file. And then you can upload any file from your local machine. Um, because we've already prepped these, I'm just gonna copy paste them in. So you can also just use public image URLs. Um, and I'm gonna bind that to my image column binding. And now I should have my little faces. They're a little bit small. So I'm gonna go over to my circle styles settings and I'm going to change my end radius maybe to one or two. That's great, love it. And I think as a final thing, I'm actually, also going to get rid of this footer because this is no longer correct. Um, we are using Google Trends data. That was from the default data. And I'm going to change my scoring type to ranks just to show you how that's done. I prefer this view because it just shows us the ranks rather than the absolute or the, the search interest values. Um, 
because I would rather just know who's winning rather than by exactly how much. And then we can also just disable those controls altogether in the control settings. And finally, you might wanna choose between a couple of the different views that we have. We have this nice zoomed view that kind of follows them as they race. Um, there you go, that's coming into effect now. Um, but then my favorite is the reveal, which kind of unfolds the x-axis as you go. Um, so you can always see what happened before, but you can't see what happened, what's gonna happen. So those are just those different modes. And then again, um, you can just publish it or um, download it um, or even drop it into a Canva presentation with the Flourish Canva app. Um, what do you think? Was that, did I cover everything on the line chart race? Would you? Uh, I would say so. I think that was perfect. Okay, great. Then let's move on to the map. Again, the slides will all be there at the end so you can go back and, and do this all again in your own time. But also great if you're following along. Okay, last example, map. And just a quick note before we make a map. Uh, this is something that I took from Mafia slides from our last webinar, which was about maps. Just as a reminder to really only use maps when the spatial dimension matters more than all the others. So really, um, if, if you want to show where the world is searching, yes, use a map, but it might not always be the best choice if you're trying to show the volume, for example, or the distribution. Um, here's the map we're going to create. It's a map showing the search interest for different films and in which countries, which film was most popular. Um, I believe we just chose the top six most searched for overall. Is that correct, Leslie? Um, I think for the chart that I did, I, I chose all of the um, movies, but it's because I can do it with my backend tools. Um, but then obviously, if we're doing this example now, um, it would be with with five movies because that's um, the maximum amount of topics you can choose with the trends tool. Okay. But, but for example, you could kind of type in all of them and then figure out which ones rank the highest. And then you could just choose the top five ones or email us, email my team. Nice. That's okay. Awesome. Well. Thank you. So in this example, um, it's a quick and engaging overview to show which country likes which film the most. But there are also a couple downsides that I want to mention, which is that it's obviously very skewed towards larger areas. I mean, that also depends on the projection of the map, which you can choose in Flourish. But here it's like really hard to see what's happening in Europe um, because it's quite small. And also it could be potentially misleading. I'm just putting that out there so that you're aware that just because the US is now shaded pink, which means that everything everywhere all at once, obviously doesn't mean that everyone in the US was searching for that. It's just um, the one that was searched for the most. Um, so again, let's jump back into the tool. And what am I searching for this time? I'm just gonna- So all these. basically the movie, so we can start with, yeah. Um, Maybe let's um, actually just skip entering all the movies because I yes. have already That's prepared true. them all again and I'm just noticing the time but it would work in exactly the same way exactly and then this time I'll, I'll maybe just enter one so that we get the idea um what would it be avatar exactly the wave water <laughs> and then we have the topic great uh so then I would just add the others in the compare section and then download this data set here is that correct exactly Okay, perfect. So then what I have is my map data, which will come out like this um, from Google Trends. You will have your top section, which you can get rid of in the final output. You, can, you have a column with your country, and then you'll have a column for each film and the percentage of which that it film could you tell me a bit more about yeah. that percentage? This is actually, um, so this is a bit different. This is the share of search interest. So we'll have a look at, you know, how, again, is relative data. Um, what does the breakdown look like 
look like um so the total of searches and then how many are for you know avatar how many are for top gun and this is why you're seeing it um written down like this so share of percentage for each country and then divide it into these uh into the categories and of course some of the movies are just not searched enough um in these countries okay and so of exactly i would like look at a country let's say kyrgyzstan and then these are the the these numbers would amount to 100 percent. they should yeah it's just because we don't have all the films in this case i imagine that they don't exactly okay so then th what we did here in order to visualize this in a map we wanted to actually instead of visualizing the numbers the percentages with a sequential scale as kind of um google trends does already here we wanted to actually sh use a different color for each film and in order to do that we needed to get um a categorical value for each country mm -hmm. um and to do that we used two um, Google Sheets formulas, which again, we're going to mention in the, we're going to share the sheet in the slides. Uh, I've also pasted them, just going to change here. Um, so the first one is that we're going to use the max formula to get the highest value of all the values here. So in this case, it's 72%. In the case of Moldova, it's 80%. And, and then... then we are going to use the index formula to match that value to one of the values to the film which it corresponds with. Um, so if I just click on this cell here, we can see that this formula is checking um, this value, 72%, and then it's matching it with this row and picking the film that is in the column header above. Um, I'm not going to go into depth on the formula, but we will be sharing it so you can make use of it as well. Um, and then once we have received our film um, for each country, we just pasted that into our cleaned up sheet over here, along with a two and three letter ISO code, which will just make it easier to merge this into Flourish, um, which we're going to go through next. So I'm just, in this case, going to start by actually downloading this as a CSV um, and heading over to my Flourish editor again. I'm going to click New Visualization, head down to the world map this time. You can just select this starting point. And it now comes with a bunch of um, default data. We're visualizing GDP in this case, along with some points. And I'm just going to drag in, oh, sorry, um, my file that I just downloaded. Um, this is it. And I'm going to import it and overwrite what is there. And now again, this template tries to match the columns for you, but you just want to double check that it's doing it correctly. In this case, it's matching our ID to the name column, which if we switch to the preview, we can actually see that some countries are missing. Um, and this is actually why I included the two letter and three letter ISO codes, because I find those a bit more trustworthy to match on um, because they account for you know alternative spellings. I noticed that Google uses the ampersand, um, whereas the World Bank default data uses the word and and stuff like that. So I would recommend using the ISO code uh, as your ID. And then in our regions geometry sheet, we just have to link up that ID to also point to the three letter ISO code, which in this case is in column H. Um, now, if I switch back again, um, I should have a map. <laughs> Let's just see what's going on here. Um, so my ID is C, which is my three-letter ISO code, and that is matching my three-letter ISO code. Oh, I did the wrong. That's the geometry, apologies. And which contains the shapes of the map. And the ID, of course, is down here. Rookie mistake. No, not quite. It's not. 
this is a bit tricky sometimes, but we're always here to help. Um, okay, now I've matched the correct ID. It's the three letter ISO code here, and it's also the three letter ISO code here. Now my map is displaying and it's showing my best picture nominee as the color by value. Um, and that's that. Now I can kind of see, I can hover even and see which film was nominated. Um, I'm also just going to disable my points layer because I don't really need my points because I just want to focus on the search in this example. Um, and of course, you might also want to change your colors. Um, I might go for this. Okay, no, I will not. That is very dark. Maybe this nice pastel palette. Um, and there you have it. That is how you would create a map. So this one is a little bit more advanced. Um, but the steps are all here. So I'll leave that there. Um, and again, always happy to help. And now I'll hand back to Leslie to tell us a little bit about a couple of examples. Also, apologies in advance, we may be overrunning by a few minutes. Um, if you have to drop, please do. There will be a recording. Um, if you're able to stick around, welcome. Um, yeah, Leslie. All right, if you could go to the next slide. Um, here is an example I wanted to show. Um, you'll, you'll have time to, you'll get the slide and then you can have a look um, yourself and really have time to explore. This is a project, project our team did with Axios. And I think it's a great example because um, it's showing you geographic search interest for specific topics. In this case, it was for the midterms last year. And the topics chosen were, you know, um, election topics that were very relevant for the US. So we have abortion rights. We have, um, I think, same-sex se same marriage, um, a variety of topics. and. It's actually showing you where these topics are searched the most in these areas and so where where they're probably most important. So I think that's that's an excellent uh, example for if you're working on something um, maybe political. Then I have we to have note an... that this one is sadly not created with Flourish, just in case you yes. were wondering if you could recreate this exact example. You cannot, but as you saw before, we have other lots. Great options and then this is another example that you could um, easily do with flourish uh, it's basically the story of Angela Merkel's tenure tenure um, told with uh, search data so I work with this journalist and um, looked at related queries uh, about Angela Merkel over time and obviously you see all these spikes here and we wanted to know you know what was searched um what were the moments that actually were really important for people in these i don't know 15 16 years and of course it, it's things like when she dared to have cleavage or you know wore this dress or when she uh, was meeting Donald Trump, which so in the end, it was really, really interesting, an interesting way to tell a story over time with search data. Awesome. This is a really nice example. And this is the final example that I've dropped into the slides, uh, which is just an example of a 3D marker map that's created with Flourish, where you can also show um, images in, in your pop-ups and in your markers. In this example, we're looking at the most search design and architecture styles in the past five years by city. So as we can see, I forget which one it is now, um, San Antonio is actually a bit of an outlier. And for the most of them, it was all the same. I think mid-century modern is having quite the, uh, the moment. Um, okay, that brings us to the end of the session. I'm going to leave this one here because we are overrunning a tiny bit. Um, there's a link to the blog post. There are links to help docs on all the different templates that we've covered. Um, we'll also be here for a few more minutes for questions. Um, but before that, I will hand over to Mafe to talk about a few updates in the Flourish product.
Thank you so much, Lisa. That was amazing. Um, so much goodness in such little time. Honestly, I'm super, super impressed because we ju are just overrunning about a couple of minutes. I'm going to go over this very, very quickly. A couple of news from the Flourish product. Um, we are happy to announce that now we have contrasting labels in our hierarchy template. This is great for accessibility. And in that little GIF, you can see the before and after. So before, labels would not differentiate between dark and light backgrounds, but now they do, and you would be able to read your labels regardless of the background of the chart. Um, on a similar topic, now you can wrap your labels on scatter plot. You can see that um, on the Trinidad and Tobago and Puerto Rico examples and quite handy whenever your labels are um, overlapping slightly on your scatter. And last but not least, we're bringing lots and lots of color into Flourish. So say hi to our brand new color palettes for charts. These are all, uh, you'd be pleased to know, accessibility friendly. So they've been tested against color, different color blindness, and they're just starting to look at. Then, um, what else is new? Well, we have our new training site that is completely live and free for all of our users. You can click the um, link in the slides when we share them with you, and you will be able to do our beginner's course if you want to freshen up your brushing up your knowledge on the basics of Flourish, or if you're just getting started using the tool, you will be able to learn um, everything you need to create stunning charts. And last, but certainly not least, our next webinar for the month of April is going to be all about how to create your own interactive reports using Flourish and Canva, brought to you by our stellar duo, Simona and Annie. They also run the social media or how to use Flourish and Canva for social media webinar, which was a hit. So we're sure that you're going to enjoy this one. Um, sadly, we do not have a registry link as of now, but we'll be sharing that hopefully in the email following up from the session with the recording and the slides. And as always, you can find everything on our webinar page. Links um, will be provided at the end of the session. And I believe we have a couple of questions in the chat. I've also made a couple of notes, but before then, as always, you can reach out for anything Flourish specific, um, sorry, webinar specific to flourish-webinar at canva.com. Um, the trends data team at google.com is the email that Leslie has kindly shared with us for any queries about Google Trends. Um, and as always, hello at Flourish.studio for anything else Flourish related. Now, again, thank you. And yes, I did make a couple of notes and these are quite the advanced queries. I'm guessing Leslie's going to be the right person to answer these. So I'll just jump right in. Um, somebody asked whether Google Trends has a official API to be able to visualize insights more programmatically. Um, yes, we do have an API and you can fill out a form and sort of apply for it. I'm sure that we can um, share the link after the webinar. Okay, stunning. Yeah, we um, can include it in the follow-up um, email. Perfect. Then somebody asked, and I spotted a couple of follow-up questions to this, whether bot searches are excluded for Google Trends. Yes. So we do have an engineering team um, that is amazing and is really putting a lot of effort into um, just making sure that uh, the Trends tool isn't manipulated. So yes, this is a high priority for sure. Okay. Amazing. And I believe um, someone asked, with the Google Trends data, is there a way to define a set of terms to track, such as all actresses or all Premier League sites, and then look at the relative values? Um, yeah, that's a tricky one. I wouldn't know way also because if you're um, looking at all actresses and potentially everywhere in the world you're looking at just so many so many entities um so that that's very very difficult to do um so in that case yeah. for instance if somebody's looking i'm picking up the example for like specific football team would they have to look for each individual and then compare yes for well a football team football team is um almost a different story because you do have a specific number of football teams within a league, I suppose. Um, of course, yes, you can only compare five topics with the public trends tool, which again, I think if you, if we would want to compare more than five topics, just send us an email and we'll see if we can help. Um, 
but yes, I think that would be a bit tricky with with that many topics. Amazing. I think, as far as I know, those were all the questions that I um, took notes of. But if anybody else has a burning question right now over the chat, I'm sure we can answer it. But if not, Leslie, thank you so much for being with us today. And thank you, um, everybody who joined this jam-packed session. Um, yeah, it was truly remarkable. And we hope to see you on our next one.